Hello everybody, thank you so much for your patience. I'm really sorry I'm late. Um, please, can you wave if you can hear me? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Fab, thank you. Um, God, it's been manic here this morning and I just said to the team, thank goodness I'm going to paint because I'm going to go in that room and I'm going to come out of here completely chilled because honestly, that's what painting does for you. Um, we're going to look at from the beginning volume two and what I'm going to do with this class is I want to show you how from this lot here we're going to build this into our different flowers and our stories and it's surprising because there are so many elements in this so much more useful than you actually realize when you just see them as a set. So there's a couple of things I want to recap. First of all, I'm going to work with a new set of brushes. Now, I don't often do this. I normally would work with the ones that are in my palette. But first of all, I've got three painting stations on the go at the moment because I'm painting lots of different things. Um, but I want to I want to work with a new set. And because I'm doing that, I've actually just said to Diane, literally, as I walked in, can I have a code to let everybody get a deal on paintbrushes? And she said, yes, what do you want? I said, five pound off. And so she's done it. I think she just was, I was like, so paint five gets you five pound off brushes. So just for anybody that needs it. And that is on Highlight Craft. So um, I'm going to be working with those and we're going to be working with some round brushes as well and round and flat brushes. Before I get painting, I want to just show you a couple of things. And this is an unashamedly big plug for something that's coming up at the end of the week. But, I'm, but the reason I want to show you it is because there's a lot of what I'm doing here built into these pages. So... Um, this is actually a floral collection that's coming up. It's called Vintage Roses. So I'm, I'm building roses with bouquets. So putting in buds and putting in these flowers. But the bits that are important, I'm going to show you on this one because the painting's a little bit darker. And when I'm doing these roses, these curved lines that we're putting in, so these, these wiggles that come round... Now, if I take these pages that you've got here that you're learning, it's this one, it's this one, it's this one, it's this one, and it's this one. So all of those, so page two, three, four, five, seven, all of those get built into roses as we're doing a more advanced stroke. So one of the things that you've got is once you master these, it will make a huge difference to what you can paint. And again, just remember that we've got these strokes on here and we've got multiples of them so that you can keep on practicing. And I've started putting up the top these flat and round brushes to try and help you a little bit more. But these are ones and I'm going to draw, pull them out as we're doing the rows. Interestingly, once you've done those, this one can be adapted for our rose petals. This one becomes the bud. And if I just pull back here, these buds, you can see are there. So if I just hold that to the side, you can see how those buds are there. And um, the only two that are excluded from actual roses, and that's only really a temporary thing because they can be included, uh, just I haven't got them in the images that I've worked on, are these two. So you can see now how much more sophisticated we can make those roses and with all of this. But obviously that's not all we're going to do with it. So I'm going to start with this one because I want to show you how we're going to make this into a carnation and we're going to make it into a rose. Then I'm going to build you a rose with a lot more detail in it. Then we're going to look at which ones of these we can use for leaves and how these different shapes, including this one, becomes detail in our leaves. So actually, and of course, we will use our round brushes and we'll actually do some detail with the daisies as well. So... I'm really, really thrilled that we've got so many of you on today. So thank you for joining. It really does make a difference. Um, OK, I'm just going to wiggle this microphone back because it was a little bit chaotic coming into the here. Um, Andrew's laughing because they're all waiting for me. I was on a phone call to 
our lovely friends at Cadence in Turkey. And, um, yeah, that just, I, and I had to get downstairs and that's a challenge in its own right. So let's just have a look at the brushes that I've got. So I've got a set here of a complete set of flat and round brushes. Everything from a number 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, etc., right down to a number two. And the same on our round brushes the other side. Now, for the purposes of doing our little scruffy brushes, the one that give us all, gives us all the detail, the one that allows us to do our um, lovely fluffy elements of our Queen Anne's lace, we would, I would be going with a number 18 or a number 20 for that. And to create that brush, I'm just gonna show you and just give you a quick reminder because we will be using it. I'm gonna work with my number 18 and there's another reason why I felt that it would be useful to be able to get a code and get a deal on these brushes. So you're going to splay out the bristles enough to be able to cut that brush in half. So there's about half. Okay, you can see that at either side. If you don't splay out the bristles and you try and cut like this, the scissors slide off it. If you splay them out it becomes a much smaller surface and you can control actually cutting it. Now, we don't want it to be perfect. We want it to look a little bit like that. But then the next thing that I do is I come into this brush and I'm just turning it in my fingers to get this bit of extra shape and fluffiness into it. And making it, I'm just trimming off a bit more of the top, not wanting it level, but wanting it so that it's as it's like that basin haircut that we all had as kids, or most of us had. And so you've got this brush with a very uneven edge that we can then splay out the bristles and get lots of movement in there. And when I load it, I would load one half with one colour and one half with another colour. Or I'd load this side here, then the top, then this side, and then this side. And I could get four colours on there. Right, I'm just going to tip that out of the way of my piece of card. I'm going to start with that carnation, which we talked about. So I'm going to work with a number 18 brush. So we want our brushes dry, not wet. Um, when you get them, you'll have, may have a little bit of what they call size in it, which just holds the bristles together, keeps them in good condition. These, these bristles are long, they're nylon filament, and they've got just a very fine shaved edge at the end. And that means that it will come to a really sharp chisel edge. And that's what we call this point here, right on that edge, the chisel edge. And it's important that I share that with you this this point here because that's the point that we're going to be working with a lot on these designs because we're going to be working out how that brush follows through and gives us those lovely tails on some of the designs the next thing that I'd like to talk to you about is the spring in the brush so if I press this brush down I want you to feel how springy those bristles are now, if you have other brushes at home and, you know, please try them with the technique because they're invariably you can make them work. What you may find, though, is they've got less spring in them. And it's that springiness that really makes the difference because it allows us to splay the bristles when I'm working. So you can see there it is splayed. But as I pull the brush up onto its chisel edge, the bristles come back into shape right up to that point. Do that for you once more. So when I press it down and I splay the bristles, there's the spring in the brush. And as I pull that up and I start to come back up on the chisel edge, the bristles spring back into shape. So when we're working on our guides, and I'm doing this while my brush is dry before we get into the paint. I'm starting on the chisel edge. So I'm going to paint this one here. So I'm starting on the chisel edge. I'm now applying some pressure and sliding back up onto the chisel edge. 
So on the chisel edge, slide, apply the pressure, come back up on the chisel edge. Let's see, show you that once more. If I go like this, you can see that brush come down, down, up, and then down. Slide, press, and come down. And my brush handle is staying vertical. So there, press, come up on the chisel edge. So I'm keeping it there. This one, for instance, if I just start on here, I'm again, I'm there, I'm pressing down, I'm sliding and coming up on the chisel edge. And as I come up on the chisel edge, you turn that round. Now, if I'm doing this with a round brush, I just want to share this one with you. Again, you've got the same spring. And if I spring and then I pull it towards me, I come back up onto that point. You can see how really strong those bristles are coming right back up to the point. So here, start on the, on the point, press down, drag it and pull, and then come up on that point right around there. So press down, drag, pull up onto the point. Press down, keep going, keep going, keep going, come up onto the point. Okay, so we're ready to paint. Let's put our colours out. So, um, oh, and by the way, these lovely big bottles of white paint, we're getting these in stock for you at home because we've had lots of people asking for them. Um, they've only been available to people to buy when they come on a class here, but we are going to make sure that they're available for everybody so you don't miss out. The next thing I've got is I am working with my cherry because it's a nice strong colour. And I'm just going to work with two shades to start with. So first of all, our brush loading. So remember, we come into the paint, we want a triangle of colour on both sides of our brush. So you can see you've got triangle on both sides, not quite to the middle, but on both sides. And then I've got a triangle again, both sides of my brush. Now we're just going to stroke the paint and I'm using the spring in that brush and I'm just going to push that down and I'm using that spring. Let's go back into here, back into here and then use that spring in the brush. And look at how short the stroke is, but how far along and up my brush I've got that paint. And then the other thing I want to share is the distance here from this side of the paint to the other, trying to make sure that that doesn't get much wider than the brush itself. If it starts creeping out either side, please stop and come into a second set. Okay, so let's come in again. And we're going to load like that. You can see that brush loading beautifully. It now feels really nice and creamy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come into here and I'm just going to side swipe the smallest amount of the cherry. And we're going to use that to paint the first of these strokes, which is on page eight. And so on here, you're going to be on your chisel edge. Look at the angle of my brush. It's quite upright and I'm wiggling a really tight wiggle. And when I get to here, I'm starting to come up on the chisel edge before I go past the point where I want to stop painting. So let me do that for you again on here and we'll do it multiple times. So I've got both of the colours. I'm ignoring the fact that I put that tiny bit of red on there. And I'm just going to pull that back through again a second time. So for this, I'm up here and I'm doing a really tight wiggle. And now I want to stop. I'm starting to think about it before I come off on the chisel edge. Let's do that once more while I've still got some of that red paint on the end. And there, like that. Okay, we'll do one here. And you can see I've lost the red off the edge. So I'm just going to pull that tiny little bit of red back onto this brush 
So I've not put any other paint on, but just to put that little bit of red on the top there. Now, um, I've just had a lovely question from Heather. Thank you, Heather. And she's asked about extender. Now, I only use extender when I want the paint to um, resemble a little bit more like a watercolour. So not when I'm doing something like this, I don't tend to use it because it changes the opacity of the paint a little bit. And I'm painting wet on wet, so I want to keep this opacity. So, and I will do a, a little bit of work with it. I'll get Andrew to get me a bottle of extender because I didn't bring it in with me. Um, but we'll, we'll show you and we'll have a little look at that. So look at how I've created these layers of carnation. And I'm now going to come back and I'm going to do another one there. And I've added a little bit more white. But I've got that red stripe in it that we absolutely love because that is like having these pinks, these carnations. You can see the layers coming up here. And what's helping is the fact that I've going from red to white to red. So keep trying to keep those colors so that they are really, really together. Um, and you can see here, they're starting to look very much like I've lost the white. So I'm going to come back into where I'm blending. Now over here on my palette, uh, the white's starting to lose its edge. So I'm just going to pick white up and I'm going to come into here. And I'm going to put white, red just over the edge. So I've started a new mixing palette. Look how much whiter it is than this one. And then we'll go into there and pick up a tiny little bit of white. And you'll immediately look at the difference. You can see it straight away, can't you? So I'm just putting in these little petals. And now I've got an area here where I've got to decide what I want. So I'm going to start to think about how I could combine the stroke on page eight with maybe the stroke that's on page seven. So I'm going to put eight and seven together. So you can see these two together. And what that means is, so let's go back into here because that's getting sticky. So get these two colors together. So if we were to combine these two, I would do that wiggle. Oh, let's get that little bit red at the top just to make it right. That little bit of red there. And then I'm going to come round like that. I mean, I press down and I've come round there. So I've combined this part of it where I've now got that curve. You can see, look, I've brought that round the bottom. So we're just going to get you to see. So this curve, so I did my wiggle up there first and then brought this curve round at the bottom. So I'm going to use that to tidy up these bottom edges and make it look really beautiful and clean. So we'll go into it again, take both the colours, a little bit of that red I've got there. And to do that stroke, we're going to do that wiggle. And then I'm going to press down, curve round, and I'm just going to bring that up and I'm then going to curve it round there. Look at how it's finished off that part of the design and made it nice and neat. And it's sort of giving the, the flower the front face of it. So let's take some green and look at how we would finish this part of it off. Oops, and right, I need to just tell you what's happened here. You see this liquid that's come out of it? That's because I didn't shake the bottle. I should have shaken it to get this to be properly mixed. So when you get a bottle, give it a quick shake. You can hear it. And then now, when I now pour that out, look at the difference. Much better, much more consistent, much easier to paint with. So I'm going to take these two. And let's just talk about the cadence paint for a moment. Because this paint has got so much pigment in it. It's a dream to work with. It gives me the quality that I want. It gives me the colour choices that I want. Literally everything I need is in this little, um, this collection of colours. So now I'm just going to do a little turn 
and I'm going to come down and I'm going to keep that going all the way. Then I'd like us to go to this stroke and we're going to use an exaggerated version of this to put our leaves around here. So the first thing that I'm doing is I've just pulled some green back onto my brush and I'm just going to come up here and let's go from here and we'll just press down and I'll lift. So then I'm going to come over the other side and I'm going to come and I'm going to press down and go back. So very similar to that stroke that we were working with. And then, you know, the little curvy one and said, we will find somewhere to put that. It's this one here that I'm talking about. I'm taking a number four round brush and I'm just going to roll it in my um, green paint. And what I'm doing with this is I'm just going to press down and then come round on the edge and come round like that. Let me down this time, I'm going to use two colours. So my white and my green. And I'm going to go again and I'm going to press down. And I'm then going to come up right on the edge and come round like that, as you would on your carnation. And if I just show you this, there are those strokes, but going in different directions. Now, that brings me on to if you're left-handed. So if you're left-handed, you, right-handed, we work in this direction. Left-handed, you work in that direction. Or you can turn it upside down and then you can also work that in that direction, whichever way works for you. But you start on the right-hand side of the page and work across towards the left. Otherwise, we're covering over our work. And once we learn to paint, we need to be able to paint in both directions anyway. But we can see how we've combined a couple of the strokes. We've used strokes we didn't even know we needed. And we've build, pulled all that in together to make that beautiful carnation. So that's the first of the flowers that I wanted to share with you. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. And let's look at the next one and the next one is this beautiful rose i'm really going to add in some depth and detail to it to make it special but before i do the rose while i've got the colors that i've got on my palette i want to teach you how to use your round brush so we'll get some really good effects with this so i've got a fairly large round brush and i'm going to pull it through the red and through the white. So when you look at it, you've got both colors there on that brush, okay? And I'm now just gonna blend the colors together. So when I blend it, I've got to make sure that white stays on one side and red stays on the other, because otherwise it just, I end up, if I keep doing it like this, I end up with the colors all just mixed up and we don't want that to happen. We wanna try and keep them as, cl as clean as possible. Now, when I'm working on your guides, I try and actually give you um, the direction to paint in. But what I'd like to say is, some of you will find this easier to paint inwards, some of you will find it easier to paint outwards, and always do it whichever way makes you most comfortable. For me, I like to do this painting inwards. So I'm just going to press down, so splay the bristles and then lift them up on the chisel edge. Okay, so let's do the same. I've got to move the brush a little bit so I've got more paint. Press down, move it up onto the chisel edge. I'm running out of paint in the middle and you can see I've run out of paint on that edge. So I'm going to pick up some more paint, make sure I've got plenty and then press down come back into the bottom, press down, back into there. I've turned the brush over to get the maximum amount of paint out of it. I'm now going to go back into my white and back into my red. And you'll find with round brushes that when you've been painting with them for a little while, they get easier to paint with. 
So I'm now pressing down and pulling into that stroke. Now, I'd just like to share with you these two because what I've done here is I've combined both of them. So some of them are straight as they are here and some of them are slightly curved as they are here. And it's a combination of both of those that make this look the most effective. Now I've got one here that I don't really like. I'd like it to be a bit more curved. So I'm gonna go back onto it, press down, make sure I catch it all, and then come back in. I've got more shape to the design. And this one up here needs to be a little bit shorter. And shorter because it will make the design look more effective. So you can see there, but it looks like it's splaying out and you've got that shape. So your straight shape and your curve are giving us this lovely shape that we've got there. Then let's go back with that green that we've got. So I'm just going to dry this off. So a little bit of the green and a little bit of the white and bring those colors together again. And naturally you would pull the stem through the middle, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna pull it from the side because it seems to more naturally let the daisy fall over to the side. And then we're gonna take that and we're gonna pull this up and we're going to just do what we were doing a minute ago. Let me just go back over that because I can get a better coverage, paint coverage with more paint. So down, as we said, come back up onto it and slide. Let's do that again on this side. So here, slide, back up. Okay. I'm just at the top going to do a couple of little strokes that are just going to pull the middle of that stem in. So all I did was very, very simple. You take your brush, there's your stem, and I'm just pulling in a couple of little strokes just to make it a little bit more detailed and give us that extra little bit of depth there. And now we need to look at this center and it needs to have some color in it. So we're going to use, I'm going to use a color called light yellow. Now I've got this in um, a show that I've got on, on Create and Craft on Thursday, Friday this week, where I'm going to be painting those beautiful Victorian roses. And I really do hope that you can join me because I think the flowers are just exquisite and what you can get with them. And I'm also going to be launching the new Dora Metallics, which are stunning. I mean, gosh, they're gorgeous. So I've chosen a really vibrant emerald green and this lovely light yellow. And the green's on one half and the yellow's on the other. And we're just gonna pounce those up and down like that. But now I'm angling the brush. So I don't wanna pounce like this. I'm gonna pounce like this. So I want that little bit of the emerald. And I'm coming round in sort of almost like a little a crescent shape. And then I'm turning the yellow, the light yellow, and putting that and just bringing in another little bit of a crescent. Look at how effective that looks on top of that flower. So you're seeing those petals coming in. Now, just to show you another little flower while we've got the chance to be able to share these colors. I just wanna show you this one. So in fact, I'll do it over here. So we've got press down, pull and slide to the top. I'm just gonna turn the brush, push down, pull and turn to the top. And I need to get a little bit more red. And then I'm gonna go push down, pull and turn to the top. So I've only got three petals there. And then I'm gonna take the green and I'm gonna make a little dome shape just by stippling with the green and then take the tiniest little bit of the yellow on the top of it as if the pollen is just there. And can you see how I've lifted it up across from the top of the pollen? And then to be able to make this look really clever, if you go to a smaller brush size, so I'm gonna pick a number eight and I pick my 
green and my yellow. Bring that together. So the green and the yellow, still double loading that brush. And you literally just touch it like this. You get the most fabulous effect and it's so clever. Look at that. Look at that pollen. I'm going to let Andrew get in really close so you can see the effect that you can see. So look at that. That absolutely perfect. And while we've got you there, I'm just going to come over here to this part and I'm just going to do the same thing. And I'm just putting in a few little touches of pollen. And it's only when you see the detail that that really stands out, but it looks so clever and it finishes off the design. Okay, so that's two more flowers for you. Now we're going to, oh, do you know, I knew this was what I needed to come in here and just paint. Um, how, are, how, how are you guys fix the rest of the day? <laughs> Should we just stop here for the day? Oh, it's so relaxing. Um, right. And thank you for the company, because you guys give me a reason to be able to paint. So I love it. Right. So um, we've looked at these different strokes and we've looked at why we need the straight one and why we need that curved one and how they both come together. Um, we've also we've looked at, although this is such a small stroke, we've seen how detailed it is and what a difference it makes to the finishing touch of um, of us doing our carnations. So I'm just going to pop that one to one side. Those wiggles, well, these are absolutely vital to getting that detail on the leaves that we want. And now I'm going to build them all together and create a, a, a really pretty rose view. And I'm going to paint quite big for this. So flat brush lots of that red that we've got and I might even just pick a tiny little bit of the fuchsia because oh I should have done the same thing I didn't do didn't shape my bottle oh I'm just gonna have to blend that in before I move on because that color's gonna be too runny and let's do that Andrew's suggesting I mix it with the bottom of my paintbrush, which actually is not a bad idea. Thank you, Andrew. I'll mix it. There you go. Nice little bit of mixing. Oh, David's on with a new product tonight. It's a product called Handy and it's gloss. It's like a, la a liquid lacquer. It's absolutely stunning. Right, um, here we go. So we've got these two colours. And look at how I've changed that um, red by using a little bit of that fuchsia colour. And it's called Alzaran Purple. So I'm just going to excuse myself for one moment. I'll just put this earpiece back in because for some reason it's dropped. And in fact, I'm just going to put my brush down um, because I have got myself tangled up. So just while you're listening to me talking, I'm just going to sort this out. Apologies, everybody. This won't take a second to put right. Um, sorry about that, Andrew. OK, right, I'm back. So I'm now going to pick a little bit up of this light yellow. And again, look at what that does to that colour. So now when I paint on this one, we've got those really tight little wiggles, haven't we? We've seen those. Well... I'll put a couple of them in here. They're just a little bit random as well. I like the way they go sort of fluffy on the top edge. But then I want to get some of our more tradi traditional petals in here. So you'll see how this starts to come together and we'll go out here. Now, I'm automatically layering these up. So you're going to see layers of petals coming to life inside and tiny little bit of the yellow. And I'm not starting there 
which is where the last petal finished. I'm starting there, so I'm overlapping it a little. And then I'm coming over here. I'm going to overlap that one. And I'm going to come out into a bit more detail. And then this one is going to go over the two. So, but I'll go up a little bit, I think. So you can see how I've got these layers of petals coming together. So this is very much like doing peonies, where you've got very tight wiggles, lots of petals, lots of detail there. Very, you know, similar. You've got the carnation shape is very similar at this point. And we're going to go here to there. Now, the next bit of it is where it starts to get different. So up here, I'm going to put a bud and I'm going to make it very small and tight. So I've put that very tight bud in there. I'm just going to go over that one once more. And this time I've picked up a little bit of white on the edge of my brush because I want you to be able to see the contrast between those two layers. And you can definitely see that. Now we're going to go back in. I'm just going to pull the paint down the brush so I've got it nicely blended. And I'm going to put another one of those wiggles in just there. So we're getting that detail in with each of these. And I'm going to put another one in. Just there, I'm just literally keeping that wiggling going. Then we're going to take a bit more. Now we're going to get into those curved strokes. So this one is going to come round here and we're going to pull round and we're going to curve. So you saw a bit of that before. On the other side, I'm going to press round and just pull in to there. So I've got a little bit more of the detail. And now my brush really needs some work. It's, it's not looking good at all. I've lost the chisel edge. So I'm coming onto my card and I'm just pulling that paint down the bristles. And I've got it nice and smooth and I've got my chisel edge back. But the paint's still not good. So let's go in and just pick two colours this time until we can get that nicely back to that clean shape. Okay. So I'm still here, I'm not thinking that looks as good as it should, so I'm going to go back in and get that little bit of detail. Like what I've done, but I want to put back in that wiggle, so I'm just going to go back in there and put that in. So I've got some detail. This one, I want to put in another curve there, and I'm going to let that one lay over that edge so it's come right down and gone across. We're now going to take another one. We'll take a little bit more of the pink here. And we're going to come from underneath. I'm just going to make that nice and smooth. Whoops, not smooth. So by not smooth, it's this area here I was looking at. So there, that's better. Smooth. And then I'm going to go that way. So I'm building the, the um, curves up, going in each direction. So... Still need, whoa, that's not good. So let's go back, pick up the colours, clean them up. There we go, that's better. So I'm going to go back. Yeah, that's loads better. Look at that. So I'm now going there and you can slide it. You can go right across. So I've got it slid right across. This one, I'm just going to go back and tidy that last little bit up, which I wanted to. So that looks great. So now if you look at the shape of this flower, all that's missing is, is putting in this petal down at the bottom. And that's going to be a lovely, smooth, long curve, which is on these sheets where you're going to be practicing this. So we've got, we're going to go from here, press down, catch in that bottom, but I'm going to keep pressing down until I pick up and I then curve round and come off at that edge. And so I've got that lovely open curve. So if you look at this flower now, <coughs> excuse me, you can see all those curves coming into the design, laying out the petals, almost like they're sort of, they're ready to, it's ready to open up with more detail. So then, and this is what I'm gonna be teaching you this next week when I'm on TV, but you guys are worth a sneaky peek. So what we're going to be doing 
is this. So I'm going to come round and we've we've learnt to go straight down. But how about we go this far and we put a thorn in? And we come back, and we put another thorn in. And we come down. And then let's look at that curve. Now I said to you, there's um there's there are shapes in here. Well, you'll see us wanting to use them for different elements and this is one of them for instance so what i'm going to do now <laughs> so, so just love doing this so we're going to come up here and we're going to come out and up and out and up and out and the part of it that you would be used to so you're used to this wiggle like that but now this one is going to curve around and come back on itself like that. So we've made that leaf a different shape. So let me do that for you once more so you can see how I did this. So we're going to go we'll wiggle like that and then come off. And then the next part of it is... You slide, curve, and come round. And that gives us our second shape. And in fact, what I would like to do is a bit more movement on the one that I've just done. So let me get you the, that movement in here. So it's a slide round, press down, up on the edge, and come round so you're seeing the back of the leaf and then that will come through like that so we've got these leaves all coming out falling out giving us that extra dimension now you asked about extender this would be a great place to use it so i'm going to put a few drops of the extender down I'm just going to take off this paint off my brush so i can get clean paint and I'm going to pick up the green and the white and let's load that somewhere clean here. And then we're going to dip into the extender. And that extender will make this more transparent. So if I were to put a little bouquet of leaves just here, and what you'll notice is they're transparent and they'll start to fade away. They'll start to look like watercolour. They won't run into each other and the colours won't get muddy, but you will get this softly fading effect. It's starting to happen now. You can see how pretty that is. It's all starting to happen. And a little bit more of the um, extender. And up here... So it's making the paint keep going. So I've got it going. It's going to last me quite a bit longer. But it's very transparent. So I'm getting that. Oops, missed there. That transparent finish, which just lends itself to that detail. And then we'll just bring that in. And let's see where you're going to go. You need to go around there, I think, to make that look right. So you can see how we by using those extra strokes, what a difference it makes. And just to remind everybody how much difference, I'm just going to here, with the two colours, go back to where this journey started for everyone when you were painting roses. And you're painting a scallop and another scallop and another scallop and another scallop. And this still has its home. You know, I still paint this. It's probably the most popular of all the things I paint. But this there and then that little bud that goes up just here. And then we're mastering. We'll just go back with that bud once more. We're just mastering this curve and that one and that one just there. But you've got something that is really just quite two-dimensional 
and you're looking on it flat. Whereas here, we're looking into it and we're looking away and we're looking at the depth of the design. So you can see a lot more detail in what you're doing. So just a quick recap for you. So we're taking those strokes and we're making them and building them into all these extra things that we don't currently do. We're actually adding in more detail and making our design look more sophisticated. We are giving ourselves the chance to paint more shapes. Don't forget the detail that you've got here, which really does bring it all together. And imagine pulling that lot into a bouquet. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you subscribe by clicking the button below. Then click the bell icon to receive notifications for all our new content.